I grew up in Washington, D.C., the youngest of three children. My biological parents were foster parents, and so I grew up in a home where my parents showed uh, love and compassion towards children who oftentimes did not have family, did not have stability. Um, began preaching at the age of 17 as a high schooler and I uh, eventually went to a small Bible, Bible college in the Washington DC area where I'm from and uh, after Bible college came to Dallas to go to Dallas Theological Seminary and uh, in my third year uh, saw an opportunity to serve in the inner city of Dallas and uh, so we, we made application to serve at the Cornerstone Church um, back in 1988 and uh, Back then, the community was known as a war zone, a lot of drive-by shootings, gang activity, prostitution. It was a community that was in crisis. Uh, many of the women in the church told my wife that they liked me, but I wouldn't make it in this neighborhood and didn't, wouldn't stay. And so 25 years later, I'm still here at Cornerstone Baptist Church, and it's been an exciting journey of watching God work in a community uh, that was once viewed as a community in crisis. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Hey, sweetie, how you doing, love? Good. Good, good, good. When I started working here, just really felt like that this is where God wanted me to serve. My mother always told me, uh, you don't go anywhere chasing a dollar because someone will always pay you a dollar more than what you're making. And so uh, I really believe that the safest place to be is right in the will of God. And my wife really felt, my wife and I really felt comfortable that this was the will of God for uh for us and then eventually for our family. And so uh, we made South Dallas our home. Um, we've asked that question a thousand times, Lord, why <laughs> in South Dallas? And um, all we walked away with a sense of fulfillment that this is where he wants to be. <laughs> Cornerstone is engaged in a lot of ministries throughout the community. And uh, the church within its DNA has always had a heart for service and community, uh, community responding to the needs in the community. And so a lot of those ministries really are geared to meeting the community at a felt need as an opportunity to bridge th with, to them that gap towards their real need and that is a relationship with Jesus Christ because people really don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And so we offer the Cornerstone Kitchen, uh, which serves about 6,000 meals a week. We do that eight times a week. We provide medical care to the community uh, through the Rocks Medical Outreach. We uh, are installing a dental and vision clinic to assist residents in those points of need. We have a clothing closet and shower complex that's um, really geared towards meeting that need in, people how, in people's lives. We are engaged here at Cornerstone in uh, educational programs, so we provide after school programs, a homework center for children in first through 12th grade, uh, as well as a high school private Christian school for children in uh, ninth through 12th grade. And so just a number of different ministries really geared towards meeting people at a point of a felt need to bridge that gap to their relationship with uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, all of our ministries are ran by volunteers. We really believe in raising up leaders within the community, but also working with the body of Christ to bring their resources a lot of times to bear uh, on this neighborhood. A lot of our suburban churches oftentimes have great resources that are available or untapped, and in these communities like South Dallas, there's great need. And so really merging the two in the name of Christ to uh, bring the presence of God and the kingdom of God to a particular community is really what we uh, envision and what our vision is. We do what we do because simply, basically because of our call of Christ to touch the least, the last, the lost, and the lonely in His name. Uh, Matthew 25 is clearly an example that in the final judgment, um, God is not going to ask us how many buildings did we build. He's not going to be concerned about how many times we went to church, how much money we gave. His uh, question is, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you close me? When I was thirsty, did you give me something to drink? When I was in prison, did you come and visit me? Because when you've done it unto the least of these, my brothers, you've done it unto me. And so it's really driven by our call to touch those who are in our world, who are oftentimes struggling with the basic uh, necessities of life as an opportunity to be able to be the presence of Christ to those individuals.